Hi everybody, it's Cookie Roo coming, coming to you today with an update. I just, oh, just a minute, please. I wanted to get my tea. I'm going on a cleanse. Why am I going on a cleanse, you might say? Okay. I'm together, I think. A uh, little cozy chamomile tea with lemon. Nice and hot. The reason why I'm going on a cleanse is that I've been eating some really bad stuff the last five to six days. What have I been eating? I share with you what I eat when I'm good. I'm going to share with you what I eat when I'm not so good. We'll start off with a little, a little raisin bread. I've been making some toast with butter and a little bit of jelly. And I was in the store the other day and I said, oh my God, I haven't had cinnamon raisin bread in so long. And when I have my, uh, my tea at night, I like to have a little something. And some, for some stupid reason, I think this is better than cookies or a muffin. <laughs> it probably is not. But anyway, I've been, I've been really overloading on carbs. I've had a very stressful couple of days. And I've been eating bread, toast. I've been eating, I brought it here to show you, spaghetti. I've been eating total crazy mashed potatoes, peas and carrots, and a lot of butter in these potatoes. Yummy. And I mean, anything carby going crazy for some yellow rice I put in some chicken and some peas and carrots and a little bit of um, the um, the pork roast slow pork, the, uh, the, the slow pork roast that I made the crock pot it's um, Joni's recipe smile and shrinking Check out her, her YouTube for that, for that slow cooked pork roast because it's really delicious. Put some of that in my rice. And I've been nibbling on chicken wings. Now chicken wings aren't bad, especially the way I eat them because I take all the skin off. I don't like skin. These chicken wings have barbecue sauce on them. I got them at Costco, a huge bag, it was a good price. As oh, I shouldn't get that because it's got barbecue sauce on it. I said, oh, I have, I have a way of getting around that. So I took them home. I dumped, <laughs> I dumped a whole bag of frozen, <laughs> frozen chicken wings in the, in the strainer, and I just rinsed the heck out of them with some lukewarm water. I rinsed them, rinsed them, rinsed them, and a lot of you know red barbecue sauce came off, and uh, I patted them dry with a paper towel. Really messy job. I <laughs> put it back in the bag. I think, well, you know, at least I'll get rid of some of that barbecue sauce. And I'm not going to eat the skin anyway, so how much is really going to be consumed of that sugary barbecue sauce? Not much. So anyway, I've been picking on those to take off the skin, and there's a lot of skin in those chicken wings. And I've also been nibbling on pistachio nuts. And I buy the pistachio nuts in the shell because uh, I figure it slows me down a little bit. Instead of, you know, buying a bag that's already shelled where you're just popping them down like, you know, Tic Tacs. It takes a little longer if you have to shell them to get that nut out. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. And it's all stress eating. So I'm going to try and uh, get rid of all this leftover starchy carbs and liquefy <laughs> myself. 
in my frosty mug. I'm still in the Christmas mood, I guess. So why am I stress eating? Well, we had a rainstorm on uh, Thursday night and uh, it wasn't an abnormal crazy rainstorm. We don't get rain much in Arizona, as you all must know. But when, uh, when we get it, it, it can be quite quite harsh and uh, I had um, a leak in the ceiling and uh, it was just rolling down, weeping. My, my walls were weeping with rainwater and uh, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning hearing drip, 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 thinking that it was just outside, you know, it wasn't, it was inside. And I opened the light and there was just a flood all over the, all over the floor and thank God I have tile because if I had carpeting on the on the rug you know if I had carpeting I'd have to rip it out and throw it away so it was a mess and I had a hell of a time trying to move my big chest on uh, have a big chest uh, bureau chest type thing and it was just a big freaking thing and trying to move that out of the way and it's hard to move because it's sitting in a puddle of water I would think that it would be easier to, to push with sitting in a puddle but it wasn't and I ran into the closet and got about nine bath towels and threw that on the floor and I'm standing there soaking up water soaking up water so four o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock in the morning I stopped up water um I it was a mess I looked up at the ceiling there was a big bubble on the ceiling there was a big bubble on the wall the sheetrock was just soaked and the water was seeping through the sheetrock like it bubbling it and every time I would press on the sheetrock all the water would just ooze right out of it but I had three streams coming down the wall and I'm mopping it up bending stooping you know my back my hip my sciatica everything was on fire Hours on, hours on end, I'm just mopping up this mess. And uh, I couldn't call the roofer um, because they don't open till, 11, till like 8 o'clock, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. So about 8 o'clock, 8.30, I, I finally called the roofer and I told Michelle, I said, Michelle, this is the seal, blah, blah, blah. I said, I have this leak. It's a mess. It's in the bedroom. She said, don't worry about it. She said, I'm going to hold Junior. I'll find out what job he's on. And I'll call him right away. As soon as I reach him, he'll come over first opportunity he has this morning. So uh, I went back, continued mopping everything up. I mean, I'm telling you, this this literally dripped down my wall. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven hours. What a mess. And uh, so anyway, Junior came about about 11, 11 and he looked at it. He said, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Now I had my roof recoded about a little less than two years ago. It'll be two years this March, I think, this coming March. And this is a good company, and I, they they did a, a lot of uh, additional roof coating for me. I mean, their process of refinishing or recoating the roof is a lot more than the average roofer does. Of course, I paid a lot more money for it, but I felt very secure knowing I was going to have all these various coatings, waterproof coatings that was going to help any possible leakage because these are flat roofs that I have on this condo and flat roofs are very troublesome because they are flat and they accumulate water and they, they need to be, they're not shingled roofs, they're coated with a, um, like a reflective coating, a white reflective coating. Uh, but that tends after several years to kind of crack and blister from the heat, more the heat than rain. And um, what happened was um, I felt very secure when they did that because they put this black tar, it looks like black tar, waterproof sealings. First they, they pressure wash it and they get all the old gook off the roof. And... Um, then they put two coatings of this black sealant on it and then they kind of let that dry a bit and then they put two more coatings of the white reflective coating on it and then there's another sealant on top of that. So I felt very secure that I had a, a good solid coating on the roof. The reason why I had the leak 
when he went up there, he says, everything that we did is intact. There's no cracks, no holes. Sometimes the birds like to go up there and they like to beak, you know, punch holes in the roof with their beaks. They peck at the roof. He says, there's nothing going on with that. But I had a lot of debris on the roof. I had a lot of pine trees in the area and a lot of other trees that they all shed and they all accumulate on these flat roofs. And um, I didn't get anybody up there to clear that. I, I just didn't think of it. I know that there was a mess of pine needles and debris and dust and stuff that accumulates in the backyard. And I literally swept up a whole garbage bag full like a, that's like a 30 gallon garbage bag you know, full of leaves. And, um, and I was assuming, well, the roof probably needs to have, get done, but it's not something you prioritize. And I should have because the um, leaves kind of swept into this one area where they have the drain spout. It's not a drain pipe. It's like just an open square and it kind of, kind of like, you know, accumulated in the, drain and uh, the water was kind of owing over it from what Junior told me the water was like splashing over the leafing the leaves and the junk that was up there and it was kind of going through um, a soffit a metal plating which kind of goes from the spout the water spout and somehow it's connected in the wall or the exterior wall and it was going in there so it was coming in from that spout, from the soffit, there was uh, an opening, as thin as it was, I don't know. He says, and that's how it was getting through the wall. So anyway, uh, it's a good company. It's a good family-owned company. And he says, well, Lucille, I'm sorry this happened to you. He says, I went up there, I cleaned away the debris, I swept away all the water, and I dried everything up, all the metal soffit stuff and I resealed that real thoroughly the, the ceiling he says we shouldn't have any more problems and I checked with the uh, weather forecast and we shouldn't be getting any more rain this is it this one so sorry you have this mess I will take care of it for you I have a guy a good friend who's a sheep like the sheep rock he'll be here today um, and he'll rip out all the damaged uh, sheet rock on the walls and on the ceiling and he'll take out any um, wet insulation that's in there and he'll take, we'll, we'll take care of it. It's not going to cost you anything. Don't worry about it. Which, I mean, I was crying because I had a, a problem in my bathroom, I don't know, about a year ago or so. And I have the whole scenario of that disaster on my Facebook page. The sealant in the in Sun City here we have wall-mounted toilets where the sewer is not attached to the ground; it's attached to the wall. The, the sewer pipe comes in the wall, and um, we had um, the, the seal wore out as it does on toilets. And uh, apparently, every time I flush the toilet, a little trickle of water was leaking in the wall. And God knows how long that was going on, but I didn't see any water on the outside of that mess. But there was the wetness on the uh, side of the cabinet on uh, my sink. It was like a dark spot. And I said, what the heck was that? You know, discoloration in the, in the, wood, the wood. And I just didn't pay no mind to it because I didn't see any water anywhere. And then after maybe about... Oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks, that little spot turned into a huge stain. I went, oh my God, that's whatever that is, it's growing. So I called the plumber. He said, well, you know, your seal's broke on the toilet. Got to take the toilet out. You're going to have to open up the whole wall, take everything apart, because there's water in the wall, which means there's mold in the wall, and all that's got to come out. It has to be sanitized, blah, blah, blah. Call the insurance company. Now he goes, <laughs> disconnected my toilet. Call the insurance company, they sent somebody here, a uh, good company, and they ripped the toilet, the, the bathroom apart. And, and now I'm thinking about this with the bedroom wall. Is they gonna have to rip everything apart? apart? They're gonna have to take the, uh, the insulation out. And the only thing I wasn't afraid of was that there couldn't be any mold anywhere because this just happened. It wasn't an accumulation of a water leak in the wall. This was just happening right here and now, but I knew I'm gonna have to rip everything apart. 
and they did. But um, you know, I was concerned that if I had to contact the insurance again, it would it wouldn't be good for me because when I when I contacted the insurance for the bathroom, um, they punished me for putting in the claim by increasing my premium by over six hundred dollars. So I dropped them. I said, "The heck with this! I can't afford this." And uh, I said, "I pay for insurance premiums for you to." penalized me for putting in a claim. I mean, I had no no idea that that was happening. That was neglect. You don't know that there's a broken toilet seal until there's a problem, you know, until you see water in the wall. So, um, and I had discussed this with her when we were putting the claim and she said, no, 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 we don't, we're not gonna raise you. We're not gonna raise your premiums. That's on auto insurance. Well, she did. She lied, the bitch, as most insurance companies do. And I said, I can't, I can't afford this. I'm not paying it, especially when you told me you weren't going to increase my premium to get it. So um, I got another insurance. I got traveler's insurance, which was, a, a, you know, pretty much an affordable rate. And I just got that a couple of months ago. I said, my God, am I going to put in another claim? They're going to ban me from every insurance company in the country is going to ban me because I'm putting in all these claims. So Junior says, no, we'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. It's, you don't have to pay for anything. We'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. So anyway, uh, it was enough to cause me to stress eat <laughs> because I still have a big hole in the wall and in the ceiling and it's all draped in plastic. And I've had a fan in there for the last four days, nonstop trying to make sure that everything gets dry. And then Anthony's coming back on Wednesday with insulation and wall board, uh, you know, sheetrock, and he's going to have to put it all back together and um, texturize the wall to match the rest of the house here and paint it. So I was just so grateful that, you know, uh, the roof was taken care of for me. So it really pays to have a good company on hand. Uh, do your research and anytime you have to get anything done, get a good company and get a family owned, family operated company. I think they are the best. So anyway, needless to say, this is going in the toilet. <laughs> well, not the toilet, in the, gar in the garbage disposal. And um, uh, I'm going to go on a, on a cleanse, kind of get rid of um, all the carbs that are in my system. So anyway, I am sharing with you all, all the naughty things that I did because that's part of the process. That's part of the obesity disease. Uh, like I said, you know, we have tools to help us lose the weight, but the stuff going on in the brain is still going on in the brain and we stress eat all and, and we go for the comfort foods when that happens. So that's, that's where I am. I was comfort eating for a couple of days. Not good so anyway that and a few other things that are kind of mounting up that have got my little anxieties going brought me into the world of the carbohydrate so anyway i uh, just wanted to come in and say hi share my little tale of woe with you and um that's about it don't have too much more to say Right now, just have a, it's Tuesday, so have a very good rest of the week. And sending hugs and kisses to all my friends out there, my YouTube family. Bye.